guys. Um, I'm going to begin. I'll start with you, Amy. I mean, it's a, I love the character of Zoe. It must have been when you, you know, you get these kind of scripts come through. You must have just read the first little part of that, little bit of that part and just thought, yeah, this is a, this is going to be a good one to get my teeth stuck into. <laughs> yeah. I mean, with a series, it's funny because you only, I think I only read one. I mean, I'm not in the first one, so I think I read the second one. And so it's really like sitting down with the writer and going, what's going on? What's going to happen? And that's what gets me really excited. Yeah, no, no, I, I was going to ask too, I mean, when you play uh, detectives or agents and stuff like that, do you find that you use real life as inspiration or have characters like that become so ingrained in the kind of fabric of cinematic storytelling that you almost use fictional roles to help craft a performance? Oh, that's an interesting question. Um, I think that, you know, Amy and I come from a similar house housing of, of how we work in some ways, but um. I always pull from personal, um, yeah, uh, you know, more about the themes that the show brings up instead of uh, the reality of working in an office at an FBI place. You know, it's like, I obviously like learned a little of, of certain things of how things are handled in the office and more technicality things. But when it comes to the emotional drives, it all comes from, you know, internal mm. forces. <laughs> And Amy, how is it? I'm sure you've spoken about Jeff uh, a couple of times already today. I won't be the first to ask, but I mean, he is obviously one of the great sort of living actors. What was it like sharing this, sharing scenes with and going sort of head to head with uh, with one of the greats? Heaven. I mean, really, I, I um, because it's not just the on screen stuff. I mean, it, that's always true, you know. But it's like the the chat was at a very high level as we were waiting for the cameras to roll and it all becomes sort of one thing. Um, I also had the thought, you know, I've been married a long time and Jeff's been married a long time. And, and I think knowing that I was going to play his love interest, um, you know, what I've found over the years, as opposed to a lot of like cliches is like people falling in love with their love. You know, it's like the sturdier my home life is, the deeper I can go. And I remember thinking before we began, like, oh, we're going to be good love interests because we both have these pretty sturdy situations at home. And then you just go, you go as deep as you want to go. It is utterly safe. Um, I mean, I would like sort of climb on his body like a child, like he was completely available, completely safe, um, which is an incredible place to start from. And Ali, I was going to ask about, I mean, this is a very quite sort of understated character driven piece. And I was lit just before this junket, I was doing the junket for the 20th anniversary of The Wire. And Wendell yeah. Pierce was saying that when he first got the script in for the first episode of The Wire, he thought it was too slow. He thought no one would ever like this show because it does, it's not going at a quick enough pace. But do you think that audiences like to be treated as being clever, you know, and actually you don't have to spoon feed audiences. And The Old Man is a sort of example of a show that actually doesn't give you you everything you need and lets you figure your own way out I suppose <laughs> yeah for sure I mean I think that's very important especially because we barely have any patience right now as consumers in general and it's like candy it's like once you start eating too much sugar you just still want sugar but then somebody like gives you like an avocado sandwich and you're like that feels great like <laughs> I actually feel a lot better eating this um and I was thinking saying that last night you know watching the pilot it's so rare to see a pilot that is like a feature film where you don't necessarily meet all the main characters who are in it. You don't even fully know the setup of what is happening in the show. You have a big chunk of mystery and it just sits there. And it's like very satisfying to watch that. And I think audiences are always ready for that. I think that we always think audiences are dumber than they actually are. Um, and yeah, I hope people, you know, respond to this, but I definitely do. There's yeah. also just that, that trust. Um, and I think that's that's swagger, that's confidence, you know, as storytellers. I mean, you look at John and Jeff and certainly I learned to trust myself even more. Like they're not tap dancing for an audience. It's like mm -hmm. we are very con we're very generous with the audience, but um, I will look at those faces as long as the cameras are on them. Like those are faces that are worthy of attention. And I think that the more the show carries that confidence with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I didn't look at my phone once. And I know that just sounds like that should, <laughs> that should be a given. But no, I have a lot, though, yeah. 
I'm so guilty. I could be watching something, I could be loving it, and I just start scrolling. And I'm like, why am I scrolling? I'm actually right. enjoying the show. But the yeah. old man, I didn't do that. But um, right. <laughs> um, Amy, to talk on, on that sort of note. I mean, you, it does. I was just speaking to the guys again for the wire, and they were saying that that felt like they kickstarted a, a, an age of sort of golden age of television, which then kind of got, went slightly quieter. And now, with the rise of all the streaming sort of sites and all the different places, there's this kind of influx of brilliant TV at the moment. Does it, does it feel like that from the inside? Have you noticed that there's more good parts and more good projects out there than there's there's ever been in, in your career? For sure. I mean, I think the whole business model has changed. My, my husband is a, um, a director and he's very active with the Directors Guild here in America. And I remember probably about 10 years, it might have even been longer. Um, he came back from a meeting when periodically the, the DGA meets with the studios. And basically the studios that year, whatever that was, 10 years ago, said, we no longer make mid-sized dramas. Hmm. We make Marvel movies, we make tent poles. And every once in a while, we'll piece some $5 million together to get an Oscar nomination. So that means really all the all the movies that Jeff Bridges made in the 70s and 80s, all those beautiful, you know, Scorsese movies, they just don't make them or mm -hmm. make them very rarely. So but there's an appetite for those. So that's the streaming thing because just kind of fills in those gaps in a beautiful way. Yeah. And I think for for me, for as a as a female, as a woman in her 50s, as a, it's just a, a beautiful time to be working um, mm. because of the diversity question, you know, which includes, you know, older folks as well. It's just not, it, it's not easy, but it's also like there's, there's wonderful um, examples of, of, of work out there, but, but literally because they don't make them in movies. So some of it is a business model. They just make that material is now on streaming. And just very funny, Ali, I was going to ask you, I mean, we, we, as, a, as an audience member, when I watch a series, I always think, you know, will, will, I, will there be a second season? I'm, I'm kind of thinking about it as a potentially long term kind of endeavour, I suppose. Is that do you think that way when you sign up to a series? Do you, do you have to consider it potentially being a long term commitment that could go on quite a while or do you just have to focus on, on the here and now and see what happens? It's a mix of both because like, you know, not to get logistical, but you sign a contract. <laughs> um, so you're kind of like, oh, I could be doing this for a long time. Um, but it also might not even get picked up for a second season. You never know. Um, you know, I've done pilots that never went anywhere. And then a show that I was like, this is not happening. That went on for five <laughs> years, you know? So it's like, you really have no idea. And, um, you know, especially this show took a long time to finally finish. Um, so it was a big investment for many reasons. And also just, I think for all of us, it's just a very long journey where every turn we were like, are we even going to finish the show? Like we didn't know. Mm -hmm. um, so the fact that we made it this far, I think we're all definitely like, okay, let's just get it on the air. Yeah. <laughs> One step at a time. But uh, I do, I do look forward. I hope there's a second season. So we also have a little more consistency all together because mm -hmm. you get momentum when you get to make a show together and you see each other more and you go consistent. Whereas this was, you know, sparsed over years. Uh, for one season so um you know anyways it, i really hope it it continues at least for one more season. yeah yeah so do i <laughs> i well, mean I, I think i think in series oh sorry are you done no is no no no, no. This okay. is fine. i think in series which is different from films or or theater or anything where there's a beginning middle and end um because that's one way to look at it it's like i'm telling the complete story i think a really good sign uh for myself and i know alia i'm sure has had this experience is like when I'll just, they become real. Like Zoe's like, oh, I can imagine her five years from now, what she might be doing, or they just take mm -hmm. on. And then it's like, whether it gets filmed or not, they are living, breathing spirits that um, have had to have a past and have a future. Um, so then that's when it gets really fun. It's like, oh, it'd be really fun in season two to see blah, blah, blah. So it's really less about like, you know, is it gonna happen and more when, you know, as a mom, um, who it took us a while to get pregnant and it, um, it's always like, is there a heartbeat? Is it alive? Mm -hmm. And, and every once in a while, it's like that baby just becomes, gets mad. It's like, oh, they, the old man now is officially, you know, a thing that is separate from all of us. It has a life unto itself. And that's a really cool feeling. Mm. Brilliant. That was a great answer. Thank you so much, guys. Much appreciated. Yeah. Best of luck. Thank the you. The show. Cheers. Thank you. you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, you 